Hi, everybody, and welcome back. My name is Jean with TheNerdDen.com, and this is Handmade by the Nerd Den. We specialize in all things handmade and all things nerdy. Today, we are going to be working on some custom koozies, so it's going to be beginner sublimation and beginner Photoshop. So these koozies are in order for The Butcher's Bluff, which is a horror movie that's coming out. Um, they have some conventions coming up, need some more koozies, and they gave me permission to use their copyrighted information and materials in this video. So I'm gonna take you first into Photoshop. I'm gonna show you how I build my templates to make sure I get everything perfectly centered. I'm gonna show you how I kick up that color to give us a really vibrant press, and then also all of my printer settings. If Photoshop does not interest you, that's fine. Just check down in the description for the timestamps and then scroll on over to where it says we're working on the heat press. And then we're gonna go over to the heat press after we print and we're gonna get these pressed front and back. So if you like this video and you wanna see more like it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section. Give me a thumbs up and let's get started. Alright everybody, we are here in Photoshop. Um, I'm going to make this tutorial as fast as possible, but also as in-depth as possible. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to set up our document. So you're going to go to File, New, and then whatever size paper you're going to print on, that's the size document that you want. So I am working with 13 by 19 paper, so that's the size I want to do. But if you're doing 11 by 17 or 8.5 by 11, Whatever size you're going to print on, that's the document size that you want to work on. Um, 300 resolutions, pixels per inch, RGB color 8-bit with a white background. And then we're just going to hit Create. Now before you get into doing this, make sure you measure your koozies. Your koozies are going to be a standard size, but sometimes they might vary differently depending on the manufacturer. I measured my koozies, so I do two types of measurements. I do the very top which was four by four inches. And then I also do the bottom piece that actually is gonna be on the bottom of the can. And that one is three inches by 1.25 inches. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our template with those measurements in mind. First thing is we're gonna go over to our rectangle, bo our rectangle box here. So we're just gonna click on it to select our rectangle tool. And then we're just gonna draw a rectangle on our document. It doesn't have to be the exact measurements because we're gonna put those in. So I'm gonna work from this top toolbar because a lot of you probably might not have your custom toolbar set up. So we're gonna work off of the top toolbar today. So to make this easy and to put it in the correct size that we need, so you're gonna go up here to where the W, which is your width, and the H, which is your height. You're gonna click on the box and then you're gonna right click and go down to inches. So you're going to do that in both of the boxes and change those to inches. Now it's easier to work with. So our measurements are four inches by four inches, but because we are doing koozies, which can be squished down, so they're going to be a little bit bigger than the standard non-squished, I guess you could say measurements, um, we are going to do a 4.2 measurement. So we're going to do 4.2. I'm going to use the tab key on my keyboard, and that's going to move me over to my next field and then we're going to do 4.2. That's going to give us that bleed area. Um, so whenever you do press it and it kind of flattens out, you're not going to have big gaps. And then we're going to hit enter once we do that. Now we want to build the bottom part of our koozie. So again, make sure your rectangle tool is selected and you are going to just draw a rectangle. And again, we're going to go up here. Once you change this to inches, it's going to stay inches no matter what you do. So now we are going to change here. So the width was three inches, so we're gonna go 3.2. We're gonna use the tab key to tab over. And then the height is 1.25. So we are gonna make that 1.45, okay? And then hit enter, and that's gonna place it on your document. Then we're gonna go up here to our arrows tool. Um, once you select that, that's going to make it to where you can move this stuff around. You can grab the layers and move them around. So we're going to grab this bottom layer, and you can see that little purple bar that, that pops up. That's our centering tool. So that's and the system automatically does it, and that makes it to where we are centered. So once we have that piece done, we're going to go over here to the far right, and this is our layers. So these are the different types of layers. 
So as you can see, we have the rectangle two, which is our bottom, and then rectangle one is our top. We're gonna make this one piece now. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna just click on one of them. So click on rectangle two. You're gonna hold down the control key on your keyboard. It's gonna be the command key if you're on a Mac. The control key on your keyboard is on the very far bottom left-hand corner of your keyboard. You're gonna hold that down and you're gonna click on the other layer, which would be rectangle one for us. Once you do that, you're gonna right click and go down to convert to smart object. We just made this one piece. It's easier to deal with that way for the next step that we wanna do. So now that we have that done, we are gonna bring in our background pattern. So I'm gonna open up my folder and then we're gonna bring over this blood splatter pattern because that's the one that they wanna use on their koozies. And we're just gonna drag it over and we're gonna drop it onto our template. Now, as soon as you drop on, you're gonna have all of these squares um, and that's where you can resize everything. And then we're just going to drag it and we are gonna place it on top of our koozie and hit enter. Now that we've done that, we want to make this background, and I promise this is not confusing, we're going to make a clipping mask, okay? So which basically means we're going to take this background and we're going to superimpose it onto this. And so how you do that is we are going to lay them on top of each other. We're going to go back over here to our layers panel. And what you're going to do is make sure your background, whatever it's going to be, for me it's called blood splattered, Make sure that that layer is highlighted and you're just gonna do that by selecting it with your left keyboard click. And then you're gonna hold down the Alt key. The Alt key on your keyboard is gonna be on the very far, or it's gonna be on the very bottom, right next to your space bar on the left, okay? So we're gonna hold down the Alt key and then we are gonna move our mouse to where those two layers come together. And if you see this over here, okay, so we are gonna go down and you're gonna see that little arrow with the box. That is basically telling you, you are gonna put that pattern inside that rectangle. And then you're just, once you have that little arrow pop up, you're just gonna left click. And now you can see this little arrow showed up and that blood splatter pattern is now inside that rectangle. So now you can see we can move it around um, inside that rectangle. I'm gonna bring you in closer to the pattern. Easiest way to do that is you're gonna hold down the control key, again, command on a Mac, bottom left-hand corner of your keyboard. And then on the very top, not the very top row, second to top row, depending on your keyboard, is gonna be your numbers keys. On the very, so right next to your numbers keys, between the numbers keys and your backspace, you're gonna see a minus and a plus. So if you hold down the control key and you hit plus, that is gonna scroll you in to where you can have a closer look at what you're working with. And the opposite also works. Control key minus is gonna back you out, okay? So we're gonna go control plus and take us in a little bit closer so we can see this pattern better. Now we are gonna bring in the pattern or the file that is gonna go over this background I wanna use. And I'm just gonna drag it over this a little bit smaller so it fits and now that we've done that now we can put this wherever we want one of the reasons that I build my koozie templates and I superimpose the background onto it is because now I am guaranteed to make sure that the top pattern the top file is nice and centered so as you can see as we move this around that little purple or pink or whatever color bar keeps showing up that's telling me right now I am perfectly centered on this koozie. We got a couple more steps and then we're all done. So as you can see, so if it's something like this where the, the, the file is kind of blending into the background, we're gonna put a, an outline on it. We're gonna kind of put a black out, outline and we're gonna kind of differentiate that clip from the background. And to do that, we're gonna go over here to our layers panel. We're gonna make sure that whatever you want a background is highlighted. So for me, it's Butcher's Bluff. We're gonna go down on the very bottom to this FX button. We're gonna left click on it and we're gonna go up and select blending options. 
Now this is going to bring up our layer style menu. All you're going to do is click on stroke here. And as you can see, once I did that, it put this in here. Now I have this already set up to give me the color. If you wanted to change the color, if we wanted to have a blue outline, then we just select that. So we're going to select, select blue and hit OK. And now we have a blue outline. So that's how you can change the color really easily. So I'm going to move that back to black. And then depending on what size. So you can make this outline as thick as you want or as thin as you want. Standard default for me is about a six. Um, that's going to give me a really good, let me bring that back up. That six is going to give me a really nice, nice thin outline. Okay, once you have all that stuff set, you're just going to hit OK. And now we have the entire thing built. So for us to be able to copy and paste this easy, we're going to do the same step that we did earlier, and we are going to make all of this one piece, and we're going to convert it to a smart object. There's two ways you can do this. You can either just take your mouse and you can drag. So click off wherever there's not going to be anything. Hold down the left mouse button and just drag over your image, and that's going to select all of your layers over here on the right-hand screen. Or, just like we did earlier, you can click on one, hold down the control key, command on a Mac, bottom left-hand corner of your keyboard, and then you can just select all of the layers that you want to combine. Right-click and hit Convert to Smart Object. Now this is all one piece, and we can just duplicate it and then print. Okay, now that we have made that one file, the last thing that we are going to do is we are going to kick up this color just a little bit. So I'm going to show you how to do that real fast, and then we're going to be done. So we are going to make sure it is selected. We are going to go up to Image, down to Adjustments, and then we are going to select Vibrance. Vibrance is something I do on all of my patterns before I print them. It helps make them very, very vibrant. Um, remember, the more vibrant that you print or you um make the pattern and you print, the more vibrant it's going to be on whatever you're sublimating. So we're going to kick up the vibrance, which is something I do standard. I just always kind of kick it up to 100. And then the saturation, depending on what you want to do, you can just kind of move it up until you're happy with how much saturation. If you go back, saturation is just the amount of color put into it. If we go all the way to the end of saturation, it's going to give us the monochrome look. But we're going to go the opposite direction because we want that vibrant color. And just find whatever that happy medium is for you. So we're going to go about right there, and then we are going to click OK. So now we are going to back out of this so we can see our entire document. So Control minus. And then we are going to duplicate this. So we are just going to click on it, and you can hit Control C. Control C is copy, is your shortcut key for copy. Or you can go to edit and copy. And then Control V is your paste. So we're going to hit Control C, and then Control V is your paste. Or you can just go to Edit and Paste. Now that we have that, we are just going to hit Control V a few more times to duplicate however we need. Get everything centered on the paper so it's going to print well. And then the last step is we are going to make sure that we reverse this image because we have to print in reverse or backwards so we can do the sublimation forwards. So we're going to go to image, image rotation, and flip canvas horizontal. And that's it. Now we are ready to print. So to print, we are going to go to file, down to print, and I check my settings for every single print. I go through all of these steps every time. So of course, make sure the printer that you are using is selected. I have an Epson 16600. I use Photoshop to manage my colors um, instead of using the printer. Um, it just, for me, I feel like I get a more true, um, from what I see on the computer screen, to the print. And then we're gonna make sure we go up to print setting. Okay, and once we have the the settings box open, we are going to check we have things on all three of these tabs that we need to make sure we do. The first one is, of course, make sure that your paper is collected. 
Um, I print normally in semi-gloss um, on a high quality. I find that sometimes that helps with pizza rolls um, because when you're printing on what's considered photo paper and glossy paper, it's going to slow down the printer to, so that, that it has more time to dry. Um, so once I do that, so photo paper semi-gloss on high, and then we're going to hit more options. I have bi-directional printing turned on. This is a personal preference. Um, bi-directional is it prints uh, left to right and right to left. Uh, regular, if you deselect it, so you don't have bi-directional printing, it's going to print left to right only. And again, if you have a really hard time with pizza rolls, you might want to do, um, you might want to turn off bi-directional printing because again, that's going to slow down the print. It's going to give your ink more time to dry before it hits the rollers. And then the last piece, um, and this is one of the most important, is you go to maintenance, down to extended settings, and then make sure that this is selected, thick paper and envelopes. It's going to make it to where the rollers are not as, has much, pr as much pressure on the paper. Um, and again, it's going to help with pizza rolls. And then I always take my print density down to about negative 15%. You're not going to lay down as much ink. Again, it's going to help alleviate the pizza rolls. So once you do all of that, just hit OK and then OK. And the last tip, if you hit print settings and you don't see this pop up or you don't have that option, make sure you download the drivers from whatever printer you have. So I see people that say, I don't have, you know, those, that box doesn't print set or, um, wow, that box doesn't come up for me. It's because they just installed the printer, but they didn't install the drivers. So make sure you go to whatever the website is for the manufacturer you bought it from. And then you, almost every single one, whether it's, it's a Canon, an Epson, HP, whatever, they're going to have a drives box. And then go in, find your drives, make sure your drives are installed. Okay, now we're going to hit OK. And then we are going to hit print. All right, we are going to let this print and we are going to move on over to the heat press. All right, so we have everything printed off. And what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and cut these out into separate pieces. Um, so we printed off three, so we're going to be able to do three koozies because koozies are front and back. Once you have them all cut out, we're going to go ahead and place our koozie templates. So I like to turn it to the side so that way I can see the top and make sure that it's going to be nice and even. So that looks pretty centered. And then we are just going to tape it down. And it doesn't take a whole lot of tape. I just do the two sides and that's it. Um, when you're pressing this down, you want this to kind of be able to move. And if you press down all four sides, it actually might just get stuck and it's not going to fully press. So I just tape two of the sides and then move it off and we are going to work on the next one. All right, everything is nice and even there. Again, we're just gonna do two of the sides. Okay, now that we have all three of these taped, we are gonna move on over to the heat press. All right, we are over here at the heat press. This is a 16 by 20 press from Heat Press Nation. It does have a slide out drawer and it is also an automatic open. So once it's done, it will open on its own. We are set at 400 degrees and it's set for 60 seconds. So majority of your sublimation is going to be at 40, uh, 400 degrees for 60 seconds, um, except for when it comes, of course, tumblers and cutting boards, ceramics, that kind of stuff we'll get into in later videos. But mainly for cloths, um, fabrics, and that kind of stuff, it's going to be 400 for 60 seconds. So what we're going to do is we are going to place our patterns, our koozies, on the heat press. And now remember, you always want whatever you're sublimating the paper between, so the paper towards the heat press. I do have a Teflon sheet down, and then I do have some butcher paper to protect my Teflon sheet. And then I use uh, butcher paper to cover the top. I do not put a Teflon sheet on the top 
because Teflon is going to push away heat and we want that heat to go in. So we are gonna slide this in and we are gonna press about medium pressure for 60 seconds. All right, now that that's done, we're gonna slide it out. If you have a slide out drawer, always remember to slide it out. It helps keep your hands away from that platen that is really hot. All right, so we are gonna we are going to take these off. All right, and now um, you really don't have to wait for these to cool down um, because of the type of cloth they are. They cool down super, super fast. So we're going to go ahead and put the back side on these. And we're just going to do it right here. We're far enough away from the heat press that we can just do the next step right here. And it's going to be the same thing. Just make sure you're lined up. All right, now that we got that piece done, what we're going to do is because we have some bleed here, which we wanted to have, all I do is fold this. Sorry if that's super loud. This microphone is super sensitive. Okay, I'm just gonna fold that, and then I am just gonna lay these across. Put the paper on top, and then we are gonna press again for 60 seconds. All right, and that's it. We are all done. Everything is nicely centered and super, super vibrant. All right, we are all done. Thank you very much for joining me today. I appreciate you watching. Um, if you would like to see more, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Leave any questions or comments down in the description. And just remember, until next time, be kind, keep crafting, and stay nerdy.